the Chinese have a deity called the Monkey King, which is their lo- version of Lord Hanuman. How did they come to start revering him? Did Lord Hanuman ever visit China? And uh, how else has Sanatan Dharma influenced them? Look, Lord Hanuman clearly was a historical figure. The Ramayana is a historical event. This happened before the Mahabharata. And we could tentatively date the Ramayana to, I don't know, several thousand years before today. We know that there are mentions of the river Saraswati in the Ramayana. The Saraswati is a great powerful river in the time of the Ramayana. It's depicted like that. It's not depicted as a river that's drying out. Yeah. And the river started drying out after 6000 BC. That is 8000 years before today. And it dried out mostly uh, by about 1500 BC. That's three and a half thousand years before today. So the Ramayana would have happened closer to 8000 BC than to 1500 BC. That's how I see it. There will be people who disagree and people who have all these dates. I am not going into that controversy. That's not, not my concern right now. So the Ramayana most likely happened closer to 8000 BC. Was there any China in 8000 BC? Simple question. China is about 3000 years old. Chinese civilization is about 3000, three and a half thousand years old, if you want to be nice to them. Yeah, that's it. And why would Lord Hanuman ever visit China? I mean, there is no evidence of him having done that. And China did not even exist as a culture and a civilization at the time of the Ramayan. Therefore, there is no connection that way between Lord Hanuman and China. All right. Now the question is uh, the, the monkey king, right? Uh, what do the Chinese call the monkey king? They have novels in which he is a, he is a major character. Let's, I think he is called Sun Wukong or something. Let's Google this. Let us Google it, right? Uh, so the so the Chinese have all right. One second. So the Chinese have this this deity, which is very clearly a influenced by Lord Hanuman. Uh, Chinese monkey king Sun Wukong, I believe it's called Sun Wu Wukong Wukong. Okay, let's go to Wikipedia. As always, let me. Uh, Remind you that Wikipedia is not always, not necessarily a reliable source of information, especially when it comes to Indian culture and history. Mm-hmm. But I'm just uh, taking a cursory look at this. So this, the Monkey King, yes, Sun Wukong in, in Mandarin Chinese, is a legendary mythical mm-hmm. figure. Uh, best known as the main character in the 16th century Chinese novel, Journey to the West. Yes, Journey to the West is a novel that essentially is the story of, of the Chinese pilgrim Xuanzang, who traveled to India. And it's the story of his travels and the, the the adventures he had, the hardships, the hardships he faced while traveling across the mountains and Central Asia and all that. And uh, Xuanzang essentially came to India to, to gain knowledge, to gain great Indian knowledge. The various Buddhist sutras and other sutras that he took back to China, translated into Chinese from Sanskrit and all that. Um, the Chinese, obviously, we know, they called India um, Tianzhu, the center of heaven. They consider themselves to be the center of earth, the middle kingdom. But they considered India to be the center of heaven. And India's influence on China is, is, is at least 2,000 years old, at least. Uh, and it's all been a one-way traffic of culture and influences. India has absorbed no Chinese culture at all in the past 2,000 years. But China has absorbed incredible, humongous amounts of, chi- of Indian culture. Yeah. Uh, so one of these is... Is Sun Wukong. So in this novel, what is it called? Journey to the West. Sun Wukong, the Monkey King, is one of the main characters who helps Xuanzang in in, the, in his journey to India. And uh, I, so, what does it say? The monkey has certain supernatural powers because of uh, Taoist practices and uh, amazing strength. And he is the king of all the other monkeys and things like that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there is speculation over here somewhere, I believe, that uh, yeah, the Ramayana, right? The monkey king was possibly influenced by the Hindu deity Ramayan, the monkey god, uh, the, the Hindu deity Hanuman, the monkey god from Ramayan. It's not possibly, it's definitely. There is no other monkey god in the world, no other monkey king in the world. The original one is Hanuman. The Chinese have had 2000 years of Indian influence. So obviously this, this, and obviously even the Chinese are a polytheistic uh, culture. Some Chinese, I believe they, they, uh, they revered certain monkeys. Yeah, they, they considered certain monkeys, the gibbons or whatever, to be uh, divinities or something. You know, there is, so, there, so there, there have been some elements 
of of uh, revering monkeys as gods or divinities even in chinese culture it's been there but the character of the monkey king bears so much resemblance the character of sun wukong bears so much resemblance to hanuman that it's it can be no other uh so, so that's what it is. So the monkey king, the Sun Wukong, is essentially a Chinese uh, representation of Lord Hanuman. It's it's inspired from Lord Hanuman, and uh, yeah, it's it's uh, one of the divinities in Chinese culture and religion. Uh, Sanatan Dharma has influenced the Chinese immensely, uh, mostly via Buddhism. Buddhism is part of Sanatan Dharma, by the way. And I'm sure that people will come and say no, blah blah blah. I don't care. It is what it is. You may like to disagree. It's your choice. But uh, so the Chinese, uh, and, and it's not just Buddhist divinities that you see in China. You see all the various Hindu divinities also in China. There have been Hindu temples in China. And the Chinese transmitted the same culture or eastwards to Japan. And in Japan, you have every single in Hindu god and goddess. Gods and goddesses that are classified today as Hindu gods and goddesses, not Buddhist gods and goddesses. You know, uh, Benzai Ten in Japan is, is Saraswati and then Lakshmi is there, uh, Lord Mahakal is there, Lord Shiva is there, which is the same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's had in, an immense amount of influence on China, on Eastern Asia, on Japan, on Korea and Southeast Asia. It's a whole different story. So yeah, it's been there. 